wonderful, beautiful day today, the 27th. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, my name is Jeroen Beck, and um, I'm happy to be your host for today, today uh, talking about software vulnerability insights and a journey into effective uh, management. And um, with me, uh, I got a couple of people, but before we go into that, uh, just a couple of housekeeping things. I think everyone is already muted for the entire session, but if you have any questions, you can send them into the Q&A chat uh, box, and then we will be able to answer them. And we will record this session so that you can uh, watch it again after the event. All right, so today's speakers, um, so we got uh, Kieran and Mike and myself and Rahil. Uh, so maybe we'll do a quick introduction round, starting with Kieran. Karen, you might be muted. Sorry, really sorry. Um, there you are. Thank you, Ron. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, I'm Kieran Montague, Product Manager for uh, Admin Studio and uh, Software Vulnerability Manager um, Products uh, here at Flexera. Rahil? Uh, I'm Rahil. I'm Principal Solution Engineer and uh, mainly responsible for security and application packaging products of Flexera essentially admin studio and software vulnerability manager. Yeah, and I'm Jeroen Black. I'm the major account manager for the security solutions in the APEC and the EMEA region. And they say I'm a domain expert in app packaging and security. Uh, but uh, I'll leave that up to you guys. And Mike? <laughs> sure. uh, see, I'm Mike O'Connor. I'm a senior solution engineer covering uh, the application readiness, packaging solutions, security, and then some of the other uh, solutions we have at Flexera. Right, cool. All right, so I think, uh, Mike, will you um, start? Yeah. yeah, we'll kick things off. So um, before we talk about uh, the solutions that Flexera has around uh, effectively managing the yeah. application lifecycle, um, I wanted to first kind of level set everyone, and most folks probably on this call are aware, you know, familiar with the deployment of software and updating, but just want to kind of level set and show some of the potential challenges depending on how you go about uh, preparing those applications. So it typically starts with a request, a uh, change ticket, um, something like that about uh, preparing a piece of software. So they go about preparing that. Uh, they use a solution, the packaging team, that could be end desktop uh, engineering or endpoint management, whatever the team may be called, but they use uh, a solution, maybe admin studio to prepare the application and they'll publish that into a deployment system. In this case, we could be using Config Manager, otherwise known as SCCM. They could be using Intune, could be using other deployment systems to get those applications available. Um, but they make they publish that into a deployment system. And in Config Manager's case, then they'll create a, a collection. And this could be the deployment team doing it or separate from packaging, or it might be the same team. Uh, but a collection, as you probably know, it's just a list of devices or users uh, on which to target um, this update, this um, application. So they'll create a collection, they'll target the endpoints uh, that should have this application installed, and they'll, they'll, those machines will check in, it'll download the installation, it'll run the installation, and that application gets installed on those endpoints. So I don't think that's a surprise of modern uh, application enterprise management of, of applications. But of course, we know software doesn't doesn't just stay static, especially nowadays, right? There's always new information that's coming to light, and a lot of times vendors or security researchers they'll go through common applications and 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 look for the potential for vulnerabilities and, and exploits of those applications. So when an application is discovered to be um, vulnerable. Um, those, that, that can be something that needs to be addressed. So the InfoSec team, let's say you have an information security team, they're doing a periodic scan uh, of the application that they're, and they're finding, um, you know, through that scan that they're finding that there's a vulnerable application there in their environment um, and we should address it. And of course, not only is InfoSec looking at your environment potentially, but so are hackers, you know, so they're looking for ways to get in and they may use a phishing campaign or something to 
to get to initially get in, but if there's vulnerable out-of-date software, those could be used to chain together uh, an exploit um, and attack the environment. So of course we want to reduce that. So what it usually happens is InfoSec will go ahead and um, get alerted to that and they need to have it remediated. So what do they do? They contact the packaging team and say, we have this application that's out in our environment. There's a vulnerability with it. Here's information about it. And they might send over things like the CV and CP numbers and applications and versions and additions and other information, maybe the advisory from the vendor, uh, if there is one or the uh, entry in the NBD, whatever it may be. Uh, and if it's really serious, they'll probably make a phone call to the packaging team and saying it needs to be addressed immediately. And this is kind of news to packaging, but okay, they have to kind of stop what they're doing and, and work on this application. And now it's left for them to research exactly, you know, how to address uh, this vulnerable application. So they'll do some research and, you know, with the information that InfoSec supplied and other sources, and they'll download what they believe is the right version. They'll get it prepared. And then, as before with deploying the original software out there, they'll push it out. And if they're following the, the method that they used to deploy the software initially, they could use that same collection, um, right? Because if the original collection deployed the application in question initially, maybe use the same collection to deploy the update. Makes logical sense there. But of course, over time, this may be days, weeks, months later, uh, the app from the initial application deployment, um, and things can always change, of course. So let's say in this example, three of the endpoints that have that vulnerable version, they get their updates, they get updated. Um, but let's say we had two other endpoints that weren't part of the original deployment, so they weren't part of that initial collection. But over time, through you know help desk tickets, or maybe if certain users have admin rights, or however other methods, they got that application uh, installed on those endpoints. And so we're not targeting those if we leverage the original collection. And then we may have an endpoint that doesn't have, that no longer has the application. Maybe the user didn't need it anymore and they were able to uninstall it or through another means get it removed. And now we're targeting an endpoint that doesn't actually need the application uh, anymore. And then InfoSec does their scan and they still see vulnerable versions of the application out in their environment. So they contact packaging again saying you still need to, we, we're not done, we still need to go and, and update it. So packaging has to figure out, is it, uh, was it the wrong version of the application or did they not target it correctly? So there's more, you know, more steps involved to get it addressed. So that's kind of maybe a level one maturity of it. Um, and is there a way to improve it? Well, um, Going back here, InfoSec lets packaging know. Packaging gets the notification, and maybe they contact the patching team. Some organizations divide up the work between packaging and patching. Maybe it's the same um, team, but in this case, uh, it's a separate team um, to del deliver those updates. So, patching does what they packaging does what they do. They figure out the right version, they prepare it, and then they load it over to the patching team. And then the patching team could use something like um, SCUP, System Center Update Point, to publish that third-party update into something like WSUS, which is uh, typically used for um, downloading updates from Microsoft for Microsoft applications, the Windows operating system, Office, other Microsoft tools. So SCUP can be used to publish those third-party updates, and they could publish it into Intune if they're using that, if they're le leveraging something else as well. In this example, if WSUS is involved, the endpoints could check in directly, uh, just like they get their updates for Windows. They could get the uh, this third-party update directly from them. But if we're leveraging Config Manager, um, WSUS will synchronize up with it, show up as a software update, and then they can use that to target that software update. Now, unlike before, where we used a collection, which could get out of date, in this case, they're using a software update group. And this is a broader scope. Um, you can target more devices with a software update. And in this case, the end user, the endpoints will check in and see if this update applies to them. And only if it does, would they actually get it updated. So you can cast a wider net as it were um, and target a wider sloth, a, a wider uh, scope of endpoints and make sure that we target the ones that we need to. So in this example, the endpoints get the 
software update, they're resolved. A little, little icon should change color, but uh, let's, let's say they do. So we fixed it and now the hacker's sad because they, they don't have a way to exploit it anymore. Um, and then InfoSec does their scan. They say, yay, we're all good. Um, no, no issues there. So that's good. So we, we addressed, we addressed the, um, vulnerable software. We got it updated. Um, uh, but is there ways we could improve upon it? Is there ways that we could kind of eliminate the frantic calls and, and last minute reactionary approach to updating software and give the packaging, the, the patching teams, a way to proactively go after software updates and not waiting for to be reactive and wait for InfoSec to alert them. And then the other question is, what about that original application package that was deployed out? So we pushed out an update, but did we address the original installer? Um, and if that's not updated, we may be deploying out a, an older vulnerable software to new endpoints. So we want to address that as well. So let's go back in time a little bit. In fact, let's go before that software vulnerability was disclosed. Um, as I said, if we could have the patching, the packaging team be more proactive and, and allow, give them insight into knowing exactly what's out in the environment and tie that in with vulnerability information, they could more proactively go after those updates. So it'd be a solution that uh, patching and the endpoint updating team uh, would have. They could see exactly what's out in their environment. They would see all the information. They would see all the applications that are deployed. This would pull in vulner um, uh, inventory uh, of what's out in the environment, and they could see what's on the endpoints. And it would tie in with software vulnerability information. So as that gets disclosed, they would see what applications they have in their environment have mm -hmm. those vulnerabilities, and not only have that insight, but be able to right from there directly create the patch that updates that application, be able to publish that directly to WSUS, directly to Intune. And then we have that updated version, uh, that patch, and we can target the endpoints just like we did before. So that's good. So not only we can address that, and the hackers is now sad because they don't have an attack surface to, to exploit, uh, but we can also, what about that um, the original package? Well, the packaging team um, also has uh, insight into applications they've deployed before and when there's new versions available, be able to automatically download that, prepare that, and then make that available so that uh, new, new deployments of the application are also updated and we fix that point there. And InfoSec does their scan, they don't see any problems because the packaging, patching endpoint team was already on it and uh, they were able to address it before InfoSec even saw a problem. So uh, no issues there. So that's what Flexera provides uh, solutions for is the patching and packaging teams to be able to have the insight into their environment and what, what their applications are working with and what has vulnerabilities and updates available and be able to um, provide that information so they can proactively go after and, and deploy and update uh, new versions as they become available. and we can avoid all those frantic phone calls and emails that are going to the patching team as a result. Cool. Well, that's, uh, that was interesting. Um, <clears throat> so let's have three levels where you can see how mature you are. Um, so just to, to see, so the, the, the level one was more of a reactive, mm -hmm. uh, where you don't have like a patching team um, uh, where you, you use your deployment solution of choice, the config manager in this case, I guess, or Intune. And then the level two would be more with WSS and with a SCUP catalog where you do that uh, rollout then. Um, and the third one that you just mentioned was with the, that is really the proactive way where you use inventory based or you know getting the full visibility, everything mm -hmm. that is installed and then related to vulnerabilities, take immediate action. There's actually no, you know, delay in that or no phone calls needed. It just automatically publishes and updates those patches. That's pretty cool. So do we, do you, besides the, the, the Microsoft, because you just mentioned the config manager and the Intune, uh, you know, are there other deployment solutions that, that you support with in this process? 
Yeah, Flexera we support in addition to Microsoft Solutions, which I'd say probably a majority of our customers are using, but we also support VMware Workspace ONE um, for uh, deployment systems. Um, but fix then, on the patch big, publisher side. Yeah. On the patch publisher side, so if you're leveraging Big Fix, we can push out updates to that. And, um, and Admin Studio has a method to publish really to any uh, deployment system is uh, to be able to hand it off to a, uh, and be able to make a call through. If it has APIs available, um, you can leverage a PowerShell script to call into it and be able to publish into any other system as well. So definitely flexible in that regard. All right, cool. And also YAMF for the Mac uh, computers as well. That is also yeah, supported. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can do Mac. Yeah, of course, this was mostly focused on Windows, but we do also offer yep. Mac updates. Yeah. All right. So since this session is also about you know the better together story, because as, as most know, uh, you know uh, at Mystudio, and we have a solution called Software Vulnerability Manager. So um, you know what is what? So what would be the better together story? In, case right so, yeah um first of all that was an excellent overview mike uh, amazing and and uh, in, in a lot of our uh, interactions or conversations with um, with our customers we see this is the kind of process we follow now one immediate gap that uh, i see in this process is the amount of collaboration interaction that is required between packaging team and the security team or the infosec team Mm -hmm. And and uh, that is very manual today. Like well, Mike gave good examples. Either there is ticket, or let's say some. If if it's like extremely critical or zero day, maybe they give a call. But most of it is um, is um, is manual, and it is time consuming. When it's manual, it's time consuming, uh, and also there are chances of uh, errors. So the best way to deal with these kind of situations is either automation or integrations, right? So now, if you get into the story of Better Together, we'll, we'll start with uh, Admin Studio and, and we'll look at uh, some of the things that Admin Studio is good at, and then maybe we'll look into SVM, and then I think we'll be able to come to a point where we can see how these two can really work together to give you the best coverage uh, for your uh, application for portfolio with respect to assessment and also with respect to remediation, right? I, I think that is what uh, we are trying to look here. Now, yeah, it sounds like a term. Yeah. So, if if you look at uh, the the um, the flow here uh, on the screen, this is what Admin Studio is best at doing, right? Um, now, for any situation, it could be trying to remediate your vulnerabilities, or let's say you're also trying to address end of life package. The solution almost every time is to deploy a new package, right? Now, to start deploying uh, a new package, you need to have an input um, that uh, that is what discovery uh, discovery would mean, right? So, you either try to get it uh, from your existing inventory systems, where you go and scan your inventory systems and try to understand, hey, what are the versions? in your system, how many of them are end of life, or you could just get a request like Mike mentioned in his presentation. It could be just a ticket that is coming into the packaging team, or it could also be from a product like SVM or Software Vulnerability Manager where you get to see what are the various vulnerabilities or vulnerable applications, which will result into a lot of application requests into the packaging team where, where, where we see the request slowly moving into Admin Studio. So this generally what it means is you're getting all those applications or all the requests within Admin Studio as part of your import process, and then uh, you want to test those packages. Now, testing would mean various things. You might want to perform some um, upfront testing or static testing to make sure the compatibility of the package is good. It doesn't fail immediately, uh, or, or if it has got some conditions like, hey, don't install on this version of the operating system, or, or that basic testing on the installer itself. And Admin Studio has, has, has got a bunch of tests that you could execute on a package. And also, it will help you resolve all those uh, packages. So now you have got a package which uh, has got uh, all the issues resolved with respect to compatibility. 
and now it's really your choice now it's it's your choice with respect to or depending on what are your deployment needs what are your packaging needs do you what are your standards that you follow in your organization do you always um deploy a package as supplied by the vendor of course with the command line switches or are you an msi shop where you always want to repackage it to msi before you deploy or let's say you are interested in other formats of deployments like app v or the new msix package formats and the one that we are definitely seeing uh, increasing in popularity and increasing uh, saying the usage is the wrapping now you you take your vendor supplied package wrap it into a script use uh, generally using tools like app deploy toolkit which is again already present in admin studio where you could handle not just installation but also some pre and post configurations or some checks that you want to do and and we are slowly seeing that how wrapping is becoming a more preferred method over repackaging so atmosphere really offers all of these options uh, where we help you get your packages ready for the deployments right so you could choose any of those and once you get your package ready of course the next step would be to hand it off to the deployment systems like uh, configuration manager or intune or workspace one or jamf in case of mac but here we are talking about windows so let me talk about jamf let me not talk a lot about jamf um and 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 also the framework that um, mike mentioned about which could technically support any operating system sorry any distribution system which is not out of the box supported by admin studio so you get oh. your packages ready and then you hand it off to those systems for deploying to the endpoints eventually right go ahead so yeah so what we yeah thanks kiran and very important points from you what we have also seen in the market from the customer the one of the challenge they have in the applications they have developed internally for their own use and they have a lot of legacy applications and they are still using it but they still want to deploy and repackage that so admin studio is also good where they can not going with the traditional installers uh, obviously we provide that in our tool as well but they can also repackage some of their legacy applications and then further wrap it to ever like create msi and then they can distribute also through this process including test and resolve issues and make it available to those distribution systems and then they can uh, deploy that further to those endpoints yeah mm. yeah excellent and and uh, my my can back me up here but what we have generally seen is organizations generally have a mix of everything i have not right. seen anybody who 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 has like 100% msis or 100% vendor supplied exes or 100% trappers i think that is where uh, i started off saying based on what are your requirements for some packages it the vendor has really give you has given you beautiful uh, command line support where you could not only silently install but also get all your customizations achieved so in those cases maybe you want to just go ahead with the command lines as supplied by the vendor or you might want to take any of these approach so th this is uh, on on a high level how admin studio can once it gets input from many of those systems including svm can get your packages ready and hand it off to the deployment systems for deploying to the endpoints to address the issues so this is the admin studio story and and now we'll look at svm and then i think at the end we'll try to bring them together and uh, help you understand how both of them work really beautifully well and worth mentioning about windows 11 compatibility test we offer in admin studio because a lot of customers are now moving from windows 10 to windows 11 Yep. and they need to make sure like these packages are compatible with windows 11 or not so we have like already available test during the process of the import where we already do it for the customer they can analyze those tests as well if there is any dependencies or any other stuff they want to add to the package to make sure like the package will be successful yeah so that kind of stuff is also there yeah. in our test yeah great point um uh windows 11 absolutely but i think you made a great point about the dependency uh, rahil and the most important dependency that i see is is very painful for our customers is java right so with with so many versions of java spread across everywhere mm -hmm. in their environment i think it it will be a uh, it will be a very valuable insight if uh, they get to know before they could deploy 
what version of Java the package has, or it has dependency on, or if it installs, if it is coming with the embedded version of Java. And uh, as part of testing, that could be one really valuable testing that you could perform on a package, which will give you good insights into the dependencies, for example, Java. Good point. All right. Um, yeah, I, I think um, uh, that was that was great. So, um, yeah, since I am also a big fan of SVM, um, and software vulnerability manager, that is. Uh, let me let me just bring up a, a slide, maybe that. Let me see, slide twenty-seven. I'm not sure if that can be pushed. Yes, perfect. So. Um, Maybe I'll, I'll tell a little bit of the story that I normally tell uh, to my customers and my prospects. Uh, and it's, it's not a sales story, but it tells a little bit of the story of what is SVM addressing? You know, what challenges does SVM help to address and solve uh, for, for, you know, for the customers, and especially around the security and the operations side of things. So let me see if that works. Click um, next. Yeah, perfect. So we got security and operations teams. <clears throat> Sorry, that um, that could be of interest of you know having this software vulnerability management solution in place. Uh, security teams they have a lot of challenges every day. Like they need to research. Uh, they have all kinds of sources where they want to see if there's any vulnerability or threat intelligence being associated, maybe with their environment. Uh, so they do all that research. And in, in some of the cases, when I talk to my customers and. and Rahil and I do a lot of conversations every day, but uh, what we see is, you know, that they they use CVE-based data or they check the NVD as a starting point for free data, and then they see maybe the vendors and check the vendor websites, and all that information is then put into a, you know, maybe the spreadsheet. <laughs> In most cases, that will be the spreadsheet. Unfortunately, I still hear uh, customers doing that, and it's it's not wrong. It's just a lot of manual actions. Um, so all that information then needs to go to operations, right? And that's actually where also Mike showed his picture, where you know that information needs to go somewhere. And unfortunately, the operations team, you know, they have to solve it. They get all that information in in coded, you know, CVEs and CVSS scores and threat intelligence, maybe and whatever you know, uh, they they all have to to provide. Uh, but the operations team ha has a lot of other priorities. Maybe you know they have to keep the machines running, service running, the network running, and uh, you know they are just having a lot of work to do. So they don't want to be bothered with you know finding out what they exactly mean from the security team, right? So it would be great if they exactly knew what you know is it applicable to my environment that I'm managing that I'm trying to keep safe. Um, so that is already a, a big challenge, and especially if there is a priority hanging on this, you know, request for patching. So, uh, you know, first of all, you need to know where it is, and then oh, there is also a time uh, time stamp on it. You know, some organizations they, they ask you to, to patch in seven days or fourteen days. Um, how do you do that if you don't have all the information? So it would be great if there was a better way of communicating between the, the two teams and maybe even other teams that are involved. Uh, so they, there would be, it would be great if they have like a common dashboard or a common way of communicating, easy to, to read, where exactly that information is available that they need to do something at that moment to remediate that vulnerability. So this is a very common, um, you know, problem overview, I would say, or challenge overview. Uh, and, you know, you can automate most of it. You can be, become better in it. And Flexera helps you uh, with that. You know, uh, we have acquired a company called Sekunia a few years ago. Sekunia is the market leader on so sorry, on software vulnerability research. And what they do is every day checking thousands of sources for threats, for vulnerabilities. They check that at the vendor uh, side, they check the CVEs, the NVD, even on other sources that uh, are there, and even the dark web, and we do our own research. So even if there's not a CVE, we could even create a vulnerability ourselves and report on it in an advisory. 
So that is also very important to know. And that's all in an automated way. We need to be very effective and efficient with our process. So we use four principles. We check and verify and test each and every vulnerability if they're actually real. We do it with teams all over the world to make sure that you know those many vulnerabilities that are disclosed every year. And I think last year it was around 20,000 and we're getting to 25,000. Um, you know, it's it's growing, it's rapidly growing. That's a hundred a day, right? Uh, how do you keep, you know, how do you keep track of them? Is uh, which one of the hundred is critical to my environment? Which one is applicable? Because you know, a CVE number doesn't say everything. Uh, a CVE could be shared among uh, different products, different vendors, depending on if they're using different uh, the same components. So what we do is we research that we. We shrink that, 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 that workload for you and we make that compact and write it into so-called advisories. We write about 25 on average advisories a day and about 15 advisories are updated every day. And we also write rejections. So we say, well, this is a vulnerability that hasn't, you know, really, it, it, you know, you need to really bypass a lot of best practices, for example you know, to, to, to get where you want to go. And maybe there is nothing to get. So this is a vulnerability that has no value. Uh, you still want to report on it because you know, for compliance and due diligence reasons, but it's, we will give you also that kind of information. And that is all going into the advisory. The advisory is a product focused, so vendor product focused view where you see all the CVEs related to that product, product version, you see all the, the criticality scoring. We have our own criticality scoring, which is great. And you see the impact. What's the consequence when a hacker gets in and you know tries to do something? What is it? You know there are 12, 13, 14 uh, different ways of what the consequence could be. You know some of them are light, some of them are very heavy, and there's always a solution. So the solution is always like, hey, update to the or patch to the latest version, this is the latest version, you can get it here, or you know, we'll provide it to you because we have the largest patch catalog of the world. I think so, that is the most valuable yeah. thing, right, Your own, um, mm -hmm. uh, I know, I'm not trying to say the others are not important, but solution is where I really like our advisories. The, the, the precision with which we say, hey, this is the version that you have to update to, to to resolve or to remediate all these vulnerabilities that are uh, that are uh, authored within that advisory, the CVs. I think that is the most valuable from where I see, because generally it, it comes down to fixing the uh, vulnerabilities and the solution part within the advisory, I think it, it makes it a lot easier. That's why I, when we get into discussion, sometimes it's always about, oh, we already have CVEs, but, but the value that advisory brings in is of course to put all of those together in a way where it is a lot easier to understand, but more importantly, the solution part, which can pinpoint and tell you, this is the version that you want to update to, to fix all those vulnerabilities. <clears throat> That, that's extremely that, valuable that, information. I, I think that's the beauty of Sukunia research because they are not yes. simply copying and pasting stuff from different websites, yeah, yeah. right? Right. They are also validating it with security best practices, and based on that, if that vulnerability does not pass, does not pass the security best practices, so we do issue the rejected advisories as well. So the whole point where customers and don't have to research, they have like the validated, researched advisory and uh, vulnerability intelligence and then they can use that and then go with that further yeah right yeah. And, and also the best way to clear the noise right yeah, absolutely. clear all the noise <laughs> yeah going back to that example yeah, yeah. the infosec team sending those advisories and things to the packaging folks depending on the advisory it may be kind of confusing or it takes a lot of time to go through it and as as karen and real have said we've we've already done all that research and the advisory is solution focused. This is the problem and this is how you fix it. Yeah, it's spot on. And actually the way that you uh, presented it in, in your, uh, the, the most proactive way, level three, I guess it was, um, you know, this is a little bit, you know, the steps that we take. So, you know, because we have so much research data, you know, we can identify over 26,000 products based on their file signature. Uh, even if we, you know, do not recognize a product or you're missing a product, you're able to suggest 
And that is a very strong thing that we have in, in our offering, right? We, uh, we are always growing in our catalog, in our, in our way of, you know, recognizing software. So, you know, and it's all real-time data. Uh, it's always uh, up to date. So just to go back to, you know, the process. So the first step is, of course, to assess, right? Doing that, that inventory to check what do you have? Is it secure? Is it insecure? Or is it end of life, maybe? And we do that by recognizing that and then um, also giving you like a security score. So for the overall, you can have an overall security score saying, well, you're, you're pretty in the green or you're in the red, maybe in the red zone, or you can split it up into several, several sections of your environment. Maybe you have <clears throat> a country, you know, regionals, uh, offices, and you want to check if their security is good enough, maybe in some countries. It could be a risk, higher risk than others. Or maybe you have like DMZ environments or server infrastructures, right? You want to be checking the sensitivity there as well. So we provide you with all that data. We, we assess that. And then we provide all that data in so-called smart reporting. So you can easily prioritize because that is the ultimate goal, right? You want to be effective in managing those vulnerabilities. And the only way you can do that is if you know what to patch uh, first, <laughs> because if you can patch something at the right time, um, you know you should be safe and keep the door closed for those uh, malicious actors out there. So we provide you with a whole list of all kinds of variables like criticality, and threat score, impact, asset sensitivity. You know you can have all these these different types and then use them to create like for yourself. Uh, a priority list that automatically will uh, be used to publish those patches out there in an automated way. And that is the final step, right? You want to patch. Uh, you don't want to just have the information because then you have to look for the patches yourself. You want to have a catalog that is ready to use. You just pick and choose and get that patch uh, prepackaged. So silent install is in there. It's fully configurable. Secure, it's, it's our secure download location, so you don't have to worry about changes of the vendor. Well, we already did that research for you, so we have the patch ready for you to deploy using our patch publisher. And then again, fully automated. Is there anything you yeah. want to add? Uh, yeah, good point, uh, Iron. I, I just want to add one more uh, typical challenge customers have in, in regards to remediating those applications. So, for example, if we have like 10,000 endpoints and only 5,000 have Google Chrome as vulnerable and uh, deploying a standard patch might be applicable to all 10,000 and it end up installing the rest of the 5,000 where we don't need that Google Chrome at all. So what uh, as you mentioned already, since we already identified from those endpoints on which location those applications are vulnerable, so the patches we offer is ready to deploy a patch bundled with those applicability parts. Means like if you're gonna deploy over patch to 10,000, that only be offered to 5,000 where it is needed and not going to offer the rest of the 5,000 where, where we don't need that patch at all. So it is intelligent based on the assessment we already done and based on that patch and added those applicability on top of it. It's just a value addition point from my side. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think that there were a couple of questions. Uh, maybe you can help answer them, uh, Rio, since you're more technical. But so SCM identifies that a patch is needed through an agent, right? It says agent or agent list. You know, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about it? Um, we we have both. Uh, approach it depends on customer which they want to take it so we have a we have a recommended method of SVM agent where SVM agent can be distributed from all these distribution points we have in tune SCCM workspace one and big fix and that will install on those endpoints and do the scans on recurring basis and how they want customer want to set it up that will maybe on every Wednesday like scan over environments the agent will be installed and run as a service and get that scans back to the SVM and, and users can see that and uh, look into that. But we do have the agentless approach as well where customers don't want to install the agent and don't want to run any agent as a service. 
So they can use their existing distribution channel, let's say SCCM, and they can run as a packet scan. They can use some of the command line parameters, and then we'll, mm -hmm. that will run as a package on a specific time, and we'll do the scan and we'll go out of from that uh, endpoint and will not be installed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so would that replace like a traditional scanner? Like, you know, most organizations, they have like a traditional scanner like Qualys or Tenable or something like that? Uh, so we are a bit different in regards to the scanning perspective. The typical scanners basically check the add remove programs, what listed there and when check the version number and then map that to that like this application is insecure, but we are different in a way where our agent basically scans the metadata of the file. So we scan DLLs, OCX files, executables, and JAR files uh, because of the log4j in 2021 all over the market. Everybody was talking about it. Mm -hmm. So we enhanced our agent to scan that. So typical example, for example, if any putty executable hanging in user profile somewhere and somebody copied that executable, the typical scanners cannot report that because uh, that is something which is which we can do since we scan each and every corner of that endpoint. If somebody even changed the name of that file, so we will still report that putty executable as putty and will not be reporting anything else so, and or will not miss that detection at all. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, so interesting. So, I think that is the value of our file signatures what I'd say yes. that no. that results in the accurate assessment of SVM. Today we can say there is 100% accuracy in the way we do vulnerability assessment. And the reason for all of that is the file signatures. We go to a file level, our agent goes to a file level and really identifies that vulnerable file and gets it back to SVM to let us know, hey, this file in this product is vulnerable and how 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 the next version or it could be a major version minor version or or a sm really a small update is going to fix that vulnerability so i, I think that right. is how our scanner is different from traditional where like uh like royal rightly said right it, it gets you only yeah. the, the ad remove details that's all which i think is very yeah we don't just we don't just report like what is installed in program files and features on the c drive right so yeah. typically most of the applications when they get installed so they are copying those files on multiple locations maybe some of the files in the program data folder some of the files in program files some of them in the windows folder and we report all of them we bundle them and we report all of them as vulnerable and the patch already knows svm patch on which location on which endpoint that needs remediation so it will cover all the vulnerable application installation paths as a whole but it doesn't even need to be vulnerable, right, to be assessed. So we can see what's on the device yes. even before yep. there's a vulnerability, which differs to the vulnerability scanners, which are looking for known vulnerable software. We know what software is on it, and we've already discovered that. And when there is a vulnerability, we already can tell. So we could do a scan on a Monday. Vulnerability comes out on Wednesday. We could tell you Wednesday versus having a vulnerability scanner. You have to wait till your next weekly. Or a lot of times I hear because they can be um kind of obtrusive they'll do like monthly scans so you have to wait till the next monthly scan before you even know there's a vulnerability we can tell you the same day the advisory comes out yeah good yeah. point mike because anything reported publicly secundia research will issue the advisory typically within 24 hours the moment we have the intelligence available the mm -hmm. application instantly will report as insecure and we don't wait for anything else, right? Like, as you mentioned, like two to three days, it gets reported back, so, yeah. Yeah, and I've seen it, not always, but I've seen it in cases where within hours of it got, there's an advisory yep. readily available. So you know it right at that moment, not having to wait for the next scan uh, to yep. occur. So. Yeah, interesting. So, um, so from the patching perspective, right? So uh, I think we talked about the patch publisher and how that works. So, uh, and it, so from an admin studio slash SVM perspective, I think those two are sharing that same, you know, catalog or same data. Uh, so how would that, how would that work? How, how do you implement something like that? And 
you know, what what yeah. is the benefit for for a customer to use that? Yeah, good question, Iron. So what we did is we we developed a tool called Patch Publisher, which which, which works with SVM and Admin Studio, and Patch Publisher. The most valuable feature of the patch publisher is to support multi-tenant environment. So because we had a challenge where customers like, for example, have uh, machines split it in a way. Some of the endpoints are getting updates from Intune. Some of getting updates from SCCM. Some of the getting updates from Workspace ONE. So how we can use single, single patch catalog and then deploy and publish those remediated packages those endpoints. So all they can do with Patch Publisher now, they can create multiple distribution system and the patch can be deployed on multi-tenant environment. So, so they can deploy on multiple distribution channels. Not only that, since SVM Patch Publisher also integrates with Admin Studio, let's say some of the patches are not available in our patch catalog. Some of the softwares which are not there, not ready to like ready to deploy patches are available in that catalog. So they can basically directly call Admin Studio and push that patch uh, information to Admin Studio. And customers typically repackage that in Admin Studio and make it available to those endpoints. So that is how the the working together thing come into play. Yeah, just like every vendors installation is different and so there we have to provide different methods to prepare it some applications are ready to go as Raheel said and can be quickly deployed and we'll we'll do that for those but other ones need a bit of effort before they can be prepared so we can quickly send those over to admin studio do that work and then quickly get those out the door so just having a patch catalog for example is is not going to cover everything because they'll never have all your applications and they can quickly get out the updates that they have, which is great, but then you're still left with what about the more obscure applications or the internal apps that no patch catalog will ever have. How do we get those quickly updated and out the door? Uh, as Raheel said, with SVM and Admin Studio working together, we can include 100% of your applications, whatever you have, to quickly get them updated and out the door. And some of the applications are the only like paid applications, which only customers can use those installers, right? And then they cannot, uh, we cannot publicly use those installers to offer in patch catalogs. So in that way, they can use Admin Studio from SVM and they can create their own because they do have an access to those installers. And then because they are paid for it. So then they can also uh, distribute those uh, from their distribution channels. Right. Yeah, those updates won't ever be available in any patch catalog, but as you said, we can go yep. through the process, yep. download them, and prepare those. And uh, and we have made all of that very easy by bringing the integration right within the product. So mm -hmm. by, by just a couple of clicks in the patch publisher, you'll be able to send a request to Admin Studio, like Rahil already mentioned. So in Admin Studio, you have a capability called Backlog. That is the place where you use to track your application requests and take them through the process that we discussed some time ago. That So that is the place in Admin Studio where you want to get all your requests and track them while you take them through your packaging process, right? Now, this capability in Admin Studio has, uh, has APIs which you could use to integrate it with any system. And that is, that is what we have leveraged within Patch Publisher where you could see an application within Patch Publisher and you see oh, this application is not covered by our patch catalog, which is, of course, the largest patch catalog, which is not covered. So your next step would be to send that that package to Admin Studio for getting a patch ready for deployment. So all of that integration is really going to save a lot of manual hours, is going to really save a lot of interactions, and it's going to make both the teams so effective and productive. Yeah, interesting. So it's almost like I, I feel like a lot of questions that will come now is like, how can I can I see this? Uh, can I use it? Can I try it? And you know, how much time would it cost me to, to implement such a tool? Uh, so maybe you know, so Rahil, can you can you answer some of those questions that we just got? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, implementing that tool, the it's pretty easy. So 
customers typically have the trial and the moment they have a trial, they can download the agent and they can run the scan in the CMD to get that visibility. Once that scan is done, all the fields we have in SVM dashboards and different reports gets populated with their scan data, which will be based on their vulnerable applications and of life applications. So even we will also provide the visibility of their secure applications. So that's pretty easy. First is the trial, second is the scan. Once the scans are done, and typically customers have like more than 15 pilot machines. They can also deploy the agent on that, but they can also do that manually by having that. So that's the quickest uh, way of doing EOCs. Once they have that visibility in SVM, the patch catalog will be updated based on that uh, scan data. Ready to deploy patch is already available and they can distribute that for the remediation. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I think there's a screenshot here. Um, I'm not sure if you, everyone can see it really well, but um, it's like a I know we are. Yeah. I know we're we are getting close to the time, but I know automation is everybody's favorite, uh, <laughs> and and we did speak about how automation could be another way how these. Uh, um, how vulnerabilities could be managed effectively. So, Rahil, would you like to? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, share some details but, about the automation. Patch automation is a hot uh, topic right now in the market because of the resources, because of the employees working from home. They really want, want to automate some of the packages, and we say it in our terminology as top weekly applications. Top weekly applications are the applications which are often vulnerable every second week. Let's say Google Chrome, Firefox, VLC Player, Win, SAP, Putty, these kind of applications where packaging and operations team spending a lot of time packaging those every week. So with SVM, with Patch Publisher, you can automate those top weekly applications. Very easy because we the first part is to create a template because obviously the patch automation will be triggered based on a certain settings, which is part of the template. Once that template is created, so customers can subscribe to that template and automate that afterwards. As you can see in that um, screenshot we have here, we have we offer two different kind of prioritization methods to our customers. The first is simple one: always publish a new patch when a new version is available. Means don't go for any prioritization check. For and this applies to our top weekly products. Google Chrome is vulnerable. Just just publish a new patch. Don't look for any prioritization. But we have seen security and operations team, they really want to make sure, like if this is something we have to prioritize based on uh, certain conditions. The first one you can see, like if the vulnerability has the CVS score greater than four, if the criticality reported on that uh, vulnerability is moderately critical, if the threat score is greater than 60, only then trigger that automation, only then publish a new patch automatic, automatically. And when we say publish a new patch, it is not just like creating it, make it available to those distribution channels. You can also assign the assignment groups in your Intune or Workspace ONE. Means like if any vulnerability landed on Friday evening and nobody's in the office, everybody is home, but it is critical all over the news. So SVM will automatically identify the vulnerability, automatically create a patch, automatically make it available to Intune, let's say, and also assign that patch to those assignment groups where those endpoints actually need that patch. So maybe on Monday morning, they will every machine will have a new remediated patch and they and nobody have to spend a lot of time researching that. Yeah. And have a good weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Definitely. absolutely. So it will save a lot of stress, yeah, I would say. <laughs> um, yeah, so so we're, we're getting closer to, to the end of uh, today's session. Um, you know, I think, you know, some of, the, it's great. I think some of the positive outcomes that, you know, are, you know, you can achieve with, you know, a, Product like SVM would be, you know, real right, real real time uh, software vulnerability and threat intelligence that you will get. You can assess 
in real time you don't need to scan if you um, if you want to get the uh, vulnerability information to take action and then it's accurate scan data based on file of signatures I think uh, we also talked about automation and reducing costs by you know automating that um, and also you know governance or, or compliance uh, I think that is one of the biggest things you know if you look at larger organizations that are currently having a lot of challenges with you know all these rules and regulations that are out there if they have a solution and, and most of those rules and regulations they they have like a like a like a software vulnerability management piece in there where they say you need to patch within seven or 14 days or you need to have a patch management or a patch catalog kind of process in place and you need to be able to assess if software is, is uh, installed in, in secure, secure or end of life uh, way. So basically what we then do is we can report on that kind of data and help you to be compliant and, you know, avoid, you know, uh, large fees or uh, fines, I would say. Um, so yeah, and the, having that all that data will help you also to make better decisions for privatization. So, uh, that said, there is a lot of data or a lot of information that we can provide to you. Uh, I think uh, the best way to to get into you know this this product and the products that we today discussed at the studio and software vulnerability manager, you know, check us out on the Flexera website or go to our community, which is really awesome. We got a lot of white papers, documentation, videos, really interesting conversations as well. Um, you know, to, to, to get acquainted. And, and if you really like to this product and you want to see more, please contact us um, uh, through our uh, website or... Just uh, just the last bit to add, Jeroen. So uh, okay. that's a good point you mentioned. Like we have all the re resources available on our community page, but very important piece of uh, portal you need to subscribe to is the monthly software vulnerability insight newsletter which we are writing yeah. for our customer, what happened last month in a security and vulnerability space. So get that subscribed and you will have the compact, detailed newsletter going to your email and then uh, you can look into that and uh, research that, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's in our blog of the community uh, where you can find the, the monthly newsletter. It's really, really interesting. So, said that i would like to thank uh, rahil kiran and mike uh, for your time and for your input um anything else to add otherwise i will mm. tell everyone to That's thank you guess. for your free interest yeah thank, well, thank you. you for your interest you. and uh, you know hope to see you next time thank you take care thanks everybody bye